The Department of State Services has called for calm after the United States Embassy in Nigeria issued a security alert warning of elevated risk of terror attacks in Abuja. The services public relations officer Peter Afonaya issued the statement on Sunday advising Nigerians to be alert and assist security agencies with information regarding threats and suspicious criminal acts around them. The U.S. Embassy had earlier in the day warned that terrorists could target government buildings, places of worship, schools, markets, shopping malls, hotels, bars, restaurants, athletic gatherings, terminals, at, uh, transport terminals, law enforcement facilities and international organizations. Well, joining us to discuss this is Bala Zaka. He's a security expert. Mr. Zaka, it's so good to have you join us. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Great. Um, everywhere that's been mentioned, it's almost like, oh, you know what, we should just stay at home and shut our doors because, I mean, these are all places that we all go to for our daily businesses. So if, if the DSS is asking us uh, to be wary, then it means that there is trouble in the land, obviously, and that's the seat of, of power. That's the capital. Remember what happened in, in, in a week. We had the president's convoy attacked. We had... Um, you know, an attack that was somewhere close to the FCT. Um, we've seen all kinds of things happen. Recently, uh, thank goodness, these uh, train um, victims were released to us after so much has happened. Um, where does this even place us in terms of the fight against insecurity? Because it's, it looks like the president keeps talking tough, but we don't see matched actions. Well, what is happening is a practical indication that somehow, somewhere, as far as security management and security control is concerned, I mean, Nigeria is not getting it right. And the, the level of security or the security alert has become so serious to the point where, I mean, uh, governments of other countries have to warn their citizens to be aware of how they come into Nigeria, parts of Nigeria they need to go to, and for those who are already in Nigeria, they need to be aware of areas that we technically call black spots. You don't blame Nigerian citizens for avoiding some areas that we technically call black spots. And we cannot blame governments of other nations for trying to pass a security alert uh, to, to their citizens. So what I'm saying is this, with this security alert and information, of course, investments will suffer in Nigeria, whether you call them corporate investments or petty jobs and activities. Because when you talk about uh, places that people should go and buy things for their daily needs, I mean, if there is such an alert, people will restrict their movement, and perishable goods uh, will, will, will get perished. And for those who are supposed to enjoy corporate patronage, of course, people will be after their lives and avoid so many areas, and investors will suffer, whether they are small or major investors. Let's talk about um, the issue of, um, you know, whether we stay at home or we don't stay at home, there is a threat. It took the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria to issue that warning. We, as Nigerians, living in Nigeria, we have no idea that this is going to happen. Well, the DSS or security agencies can tell us that they're trying to douse tension. They do not want to alarm us. But the government of the day, I, like, I always like to go back to the fact that this is one of the things that President Muhammad Buhari and his vice, Yemir Shibajo, ran on. They promised, in fact, one of the reasons why Nigerians voted for this administration was because they promised that this issue of insecurity will be a thing of the past. But can we also say that it has more than doubled? In fact, it has become something... Um, that, you know, it keeps duplicating itself. Now we have sales, we have not just Boko Haram, but we have Ice Swap, we have the Bandits, we have um, the Castle Rustlers, we have the Unknown Godmen, even in the Southeast. We've, we've seen all kinds of killings and kidnappings on the rise. Um, could we have nipped this in the bud earlier on? And what is it that every other person in Every other part of the world, even right here in Africa, certain countries have been able to deal with, you know, the gun running across the Sahel. But it looks like Nigeria, we keep on, you know, making the same mistakes over and over again. What is it that we're missing? In fact, one of the biggest problems I have with our economic and political leaders is 
lack of honesty. Ordinarily, I would expect us to be running a system of government where children are to parent what citizens should be to their leaders. Even as parents, I mean, our children should not expect us to be perfect, but we should be honest and always tell them the truth. If things are not going right, tell your children. If you, are, if you don't have a job, if the economy is hard, tell them. But the problem we are having, or I am having personally, with our leaders is that they don't tell the citizens the truth. And they have forgotten that we are in the days of information technology. There is nothing that you can hide. Everybody knows that the security architecture in the country has decayed and things are not going well. Instead of leaders to tell citizens the truth, so that citizens can support leaders and make sure we find workable solutions. The leaders will be acting as if all is well. It's the same thing that is happening with the oil and gas industry. At a point, the major oil and gas operators were leaving Nigeria. We knew that it was because of business climate hostility. But our government and leaders, or some of them, we are saying that the major oil companies were leaving because they wanted to divest and invest in renewable energy. Mm. All the leaders need to do is to come out and tell citizens the truth. Let citizens know and now collectively work with their leaders to find solutions. Okay. Uh, I just want to give you some statistics to buttress the point that I'm about to make. Now, terrorists killed a soldier recently. They've killed a customs officer. They kidnapped 20 farmers. The police, on one hand, is saying that, oh, well, we plan to strengthen our security uh, and re-strategize. I'm, I'm wondering, as a lay person, if we have dealt with this level of insecurity that keeps going from bad to worse in almost eight years uh, under this administration, I mean, and even before then, but what we're seeing now is obviously has all obviously you know, decayed under this administration. Why is our security agency telling us that they're trying or they're planning to re-strategize? They're planning to strengthen security. Should this have not been done in the first instance? Again, there are people who will say that, oh, the police has been uh, stretched thin and, and we don't have enough police officers to police us. And now we have soldiers on the streets who are not supposed to be there. Um, we've also heard the police chief, the IGP of police, talk tough say he's, he's going to ensure watertight th security across the country, across all of these places I, I mentioned when we started this conversation. They've talked off and said, we're on top of the matter, we'll leave no stone unturned. All of these statements have not been matched with action. Again, you've talked about the fact that, well, they're not being sincere. Okay, um, they, even if they were sincere to us and nothing is still being done, where are we, where are we really headed to? Because again, more and more lives are being wasted Unnecessarily. Between you and I, interagency collaboration, or well, let me package it well. Security interagency collaboration is a problem of its own, it's a subject of its own that should be discussed on another day again if you create the time and the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Lack of Interagency collaboration, lack of understanding, is a major problem on its own. But we are talking about general failure of security across the strata of Nigeria. Because in the first place, when you talk about security, there is what we call territorial integrity security and internal security. Ordinarily, if we were to have a functional and a well-equipped police system. I mean, military should not be involved in internal security issues. The military is supposed to be there to take care of territorial intervention, intrusion, or aggression. But because somehow, somewhere, the police is underfunded, we know that, that there is lack of motivation within the police force. We know that, I mean, even some of the police that lose their lives, their, their families don't get, I mean, uh, 
appreciated. So there is that, I mean, uh, feeling of downcast. And that was why the military was deployed. And when the military got deployed, somehow, somewhere, there is no congruency between them. And that's why you will see uh, a, an army person personnel or a Navy personnel or an Air Force personnel will be fighting with the civil defense personnel, will be fighting with the police uh, officer or a customer, and they, were, they are even killing themselves. So it, lack of interagency, understanding, and collaboration is a major problem on its own and a subject matter on its own. All right. Let's talk about um, what Nigerians have to face on a daily basis. Now, Nigerians have somewhat, and this is not just about the Buhari administration. This has happened over time. Nigerians have had to provide everything from them, for themselves, uh, ranging from water to light to sometimes even grading their own roads, you know, because... We, we have seen that government have not necessarily lived up to expectation. And when I say government, again, not just the Buhari administration. And now it seems that we've resorted also to providing our own security um, by living in gated areas and, and um, you know, getting private security personnel. What is the fate of the actual, the average Nigerian? And, and, and really, um, what value is there on the average Nigerian life? Uh, between you and I, before I will answer this question, I just want to tell you that everything I will tell you in answering this your question is purely based on me, my opinion, and my utterance. Okay. Give my phone number to anybody. Give my house address to anybody. As far as I am concerned, the government has underperformed in the area of security, in the areas of education, in the area of food, in the area of energy, in the area of even politics. Quote me. Because as I speak to you right now, disposable income has been eroded by inflation. A lot of people have been thrown out of jobs. As I speak to you now, the price of putting gas has become prohibitive. I said, quote me. I am from the northern part of the country where majority of people are farmers. In the last seven years or seven years ago, the fertilizer that used to, a bag of fertilizer that used to cost 3,000 or 5,000 is now 20 something thousand. Quote me that I say so. Everybody knows that uh, about seven years ago, the, the, the liter of diesel was like about uh, 80 naira. Then when, when we went into the regulation, it jumped 120. A liter of diesel is heading to about 700 to 800 naira now. Quote me that I say so. Everybody knows the, the, the price of uh, uh, aviation fuel. On diesel alone, strategic industrial sectors, commercial sectors, and domestic sectors are suffering and have collapsed. Everybody knows, quote me that I said this year alone, because of the cost of energy, company income tax will go down. I mean, will go down. Personal income tax will go down. Quote me that I say so. So as far as performance is concerned, seven years ago and today, Niger the average life of a Nigerian in terms of economic empowerment has eroded. Yes, government is supposed to be a continuum. And that is why we are saying, come 2023, those who want to be our leader must be questioned. We don't want somebody who will come and say, I will construct seven kilometer road for you. But at the time that person will be talking, he doesn't know how much the bag of a cement costs. He doesn't know how much a bag of a lateral costs. He doesn't know anything about soil compaction. We don't want economic maruders and economic vampires to present themselves. Rather, we are ready to support those who will want to lead us and lead us right and in national interest. Quote me that I said so. Um, you, you said something about questioning them. I mean, some of these people are smooth talkers. They've done this over time so much that they can say it in their sleep. So I could come here and talk a good game, but then when it comes down to it, don't forget, I'm going to use President Buhari here again. He's on the chopping board this night. Um, he promised a lot. <coughs> in fact, he set our expectations pretty high. But as we speak, 
from the, 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 the put together of his cabinet all the way down to he speaking with us or giving us attention or even addressing us as a country. Um, we can say that the president has not necessarily lived up to that high expectation of where the hopes you know, we had for him were at the time. So again, questioning and getting answers. Is it just that, that we need to be able to pick the right people again? If everything that you've said tonight is anything to go by, talking about the failures of our government, subsequent and of course the present ones, um, why then do we need a government if we're doing everything for ourselves? And what's the essence of this government if they are unable to give us the basics, even, even, even the most important as securing lives and property? When, when you talk about government, actually, the first thing is to pray and hope to get a visionary leader. Mm. But once you get a visionary leader, the next thing is to hope that that visionary leader will surround himself with supportive and credible lieutenants. Because that president or leader will not be the accountant. He will not be the energy journalist. He will not be the medical doctor. He will not be the engineer. He will not be the environmentalist. But he can identify competent lieutenants that will help you. And this is my definition of leader or leaders. A leader is somebody that citizens of a country have collectively accepted and elected him or her to lead them in national interest. Mm -hmm. And to that extent, a leader should be ready to surround himself with supporting lieutenants. And that's why come 2023, I am advocating for an inclusive government. In other words, regardless of the other parties that other people belong to, if you find out that there are credible Nigerians among them that will help you to achieve the mission and vision of growing Nigeria economically, politically, socially, and in terms of security, bring them on board. That is the meaning of an integrated and an inclusive okay. government. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you, Mr. Bala Zaka. He's a security expert. Always a pleasure to have you on the, uh, on the show. Uh, we're hoping that we will make the right choices come 2023. Thank you. All right. Well, that's the show tonight. I want to thank you all for being part of the conversation. And, of course, we will be back tomorrow, as usual, talking for development and bringing you the biggest political stories across the country and even around the continent. I'm Mary Anacon. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube uh, page, follow Plus TV Africa on YouTube and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. And you can watch us on all streaming platforms, including the Glow streaming platform. I'm Mary Anacon. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.